you know, I can't express to you enough in how the cutting edge we are on and where we're at right now. It's almost to the area. There's such an urgency in it and such an acceleration. And many are compromising and going to the gray. Many are going back to the world. Many are going astray and drifting. And I, and I can tell you that there is great reward for those who stand all the way through. I can tell you that this world has nothing to offer us. Truly nothing. It's nothing but a vain, disgusting place. When you're in the presence of God, everything here is disgusting. But God expresses himself through many things. But you have to have eyes to see and ears to hear and a heart to receive the things that God is expressing them through. Or we miss it. So many times people miss the visitation of the Lord. So many times we miss the message God is trying to bring us or a word or something specific to encourage us, to strengthen us, to empower us, to redirect us. Amen. But we get so caught up. And that's what the enemy wants to do. Get us so caught up. We get caught up in ourselves. We get caught up in our families. We get caught up in our jobs. We get caught up in survival. We get caught up in our abilities. We get caught up in our talents. We get caught up in our sicknesses. We get caught up in our lacks. We just get stinking caught up. But I'm telling you, he's the only one that can catch you up. So you can do all the cutting up you want. <laughs> but you're not going to get caught up in the things that the enemy has taken. Only the Lord can restore. And there are times when he's going to restore something and he's not going to restore something. So people are waiting for God to restore something when he says, I'm not going to. So they get caught up and waiting on something to be restored and he's saying, move on. But because people want what they want and they want it when they want it, because of the human carnal nature, because that nature is a corrupt nature. And we must overcome that corrupt nature in every area of our life. In every area. You cannot go forward in the kingdom of God without overcoming yourself. The formula stands. Deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow him. <laughs> it doesn't, there's no alteration. There's no change. And there's no picking up the cross, following him, and then denying yourself. It doesn't work that way. Amen. The formula has been set. That's that. Amen. It is, it was, and it will always be. Deny yourself, pick up the cross, then you can follow him. That's it. Too many people try to follow him without denying self. Then they get themselves in trouble. They manifest in the flesh, and they bring shame to the name of the Lord because they didn't acknowledge the denial of self. Amen. You know, the Word tells us that we're not to die for self. We're to die to self. Mm -hmm. And too many people are dying for self instead of dying to self. So it puts things out of a divine Order changes things that they're not in divine order anymore. So they begin to live for something besides Christ, even though they profess Christ. Oh, I love the Lord. Yes, but I have to do this first. See, when Christ, Jesus, and the will of God is not priority in your life, when the things of maintaining are not priority in your life, then we're out of order. And we're in the gray. And people who are in the gray are actually in the dark. There's no difference. God is light and there is no darkness in him. 
Amen? So you're either in the light or you're in deception, even if it's a gray area. But I can tell you that so many times individuals do not maintain because they don't practice. They don't maintain. They think because they've maintained for a little bit, they're okay. Maintaining is a daily basis. In fact, here's the formula again. Deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow him. There's another specific word that connects to all three. It says daily. Everyone say daily. Daily. Not yesterday. Not tomorrow. Today. Daily deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. Denying yourself means take off the old. Pick up the cross means put on the new. And follow means obey, submit. But you can't do that unless you first daily deny yourself. This is what we call maintaining. Too many individuals don't maintain. Then they lose everything. And they wonder why. They're trying to calculate well, well, how did I get here? Well, why did I lose this? Why did this happen? Why did that happen? It's real simple. You did not maintain the formula of victory daily. I'm going to say that again. Daily. Deny yourself. Pick up the cross and follow him. It isn't that difficult. Christ is simple. It's the enemy who tries to make things difficult. Oh, I need to do this more. I need to do that more. You can't do anything more. Your moreness is vain. What we need to do is maintain. And if we'll maintain the formula that the Lord has given us, we will have victory. And everything else will fall into place. Amen. And you know what's going to be wonderful? You will receive a just reward. Everyone say just reward. just reward. Turn to Galatians 6. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7. Praise God. <laughs> you know, I love worshiping the Lord. Amen. Man, I could go all night. In fact, there's times when I ask him, do you want the word to be delivered or can we just do an anointing <laughs> service? Can we just get in there and just die? But there's an urgency. There's an urgency. Again, we are in an urgency because too many people are being taken out and going astray. Way too many. Too many people are in the gray. Too many. The grieving of the Lord is phenomenal. And I pray he releases his grieving in you so I'm not the only one who carries it. But there is a grieving, a grieving of God Almighty, a father who sees his children going astray, being deceived, taken out, losing priorities, falling out of position because they're not maintaining. They're maintaining in their own character, their own way, their own will. They're not maintaining according to his way. In Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7 it says, don't be what? Deceived. Satan's greatest weapon is deception. His power is fear. We all know that. You know, we can know a lot of things but not do them. There's a lot of believers that know things. It doesn't say, listen, the Bible says truth will set you free, but that's not what it means. Because a lot of people have truth. But they're not doing something. They're not practicing the truth. That means if you're not maintaining the truth, you can't stay free. Why? Because that's a part of the formula, isn't it? 
daily. Deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow daily. So that means if you do those things, you are going to practice truth. Practicing truth will keep you free once you've been freed. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever man sows that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will reap of the f flesh corruption. That means the enemy has access to you and you will manifest his will, which will establish corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. Both of these are a just reward. In the eyes of God, they are both a just reward. He who sows to the flesh shall reap corruption. That's a just reward. Does everybody got it? Because it's a judgment. The throne is established by righteousness and justice. That's his foundation of his throne. Righteousness and justice. So in this, he releases a just reward. The word says, what you sow is what you reap. What you sow is what you reap. That is a part of a spiritual law. You can't alter it. You can't change it. But you can outrun it. By doing more sowing. That means more confession, more praise and worship. Then you can outrun some of the corruption, do you? That's why the enemy puts his foot in your mouth. So you don't sow enough. And sowing is a part of denying yourself. Because if you don't sow, you don't sing, you don't praise, you don't worship, and you don't quote the scriptures. And when you first come into the discipleship house, you're not doing those prayers seven times a day for seven days, then you're going to reap corruption. And you will try to manage demons and never be free. Because God has given us the formula for freedom. Daily. That's why daily you must put on a full armor of God. Daily you must decree. Daily you must speak the word. Daily you sever emotional tears. There are things that we must do daily to maintain freedom. Or you won't. In verse 9 it says, let us not grow weary while doing good for in due season we will reap if we do not what? Lose heart. You know why people lose heart? Because they go how they feel. The devil comes up and says, you know, nothing's really happening. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, man, what am I doing it for? <laughs> you know what? They don't believe that. See, we're to deny ourselves. It's going, oh, really? Well, then maybe I shouldn't do it anymore. Well, that's certainly not denying yourself, is it? Maybe I should just not pray anymore. Maybe I should just stop going to church. Maybe I should just, if nothing's working. But God is, gives us eternal words. They're working. That's why the enemy comes to you and tells you they're not. Amen. Oh, that's not working. You better stop. And he's got harpoons and knives in him. And you just can't see it. He's walking around like this. Man, you need to stop that stuff. It ain't working. <laughs> see, because he knows. You need to stop that praying in the spirit. It doesn't do any good. Nobody hears you. Oh, God. <laughs> he knows. But he knows if he can deceive you and prevent you from maintaining, from practicing, he's got access to you. If he can convince you on the little, he will convince you on the large. That's right. It's just a matter of time. That's right. <laughs> 2 Timothy chapter 2. Hallelujah. 2 Tim Timothy chapter 2 and verse 7. 2 Timothy 2, verse 7. 
Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. And I'm going to tell you something. We need understanding. What do we need understanding about the formula? This is a divine formula. People, oh, God doesn't give formulas. Oh, yes, he does, his promises. He tells us. He, listen, he's for us, not against us. But it's people that try to change God's formula. They try to change his recipes. They try to change his word. In fact, there are people who don't even believe in the whole Bible, but they try to tell you what to do. Well, let me give you my opinion. Why don't you just let me slap you with the Bible then? Opinions are no effect. They mean nothing. And God is not interested in our opinion. He wants to know whether we are practicing the truth or not. You cannot go into a military war zone without practicing the truth. You will lose the battle. You will become a casualty of war. You will get sucked in the ring and you will manifest the flesh. You will blame everybody else for your stuff when you're the ones with the demons. Why? Because you will maintain an arena of pride and not humbleness. Only those who are maintaining the formula will maintain humbleness. So we need understanding, don't we? Consider what I say. May the Lord give you understanding in all things. How many need understanding in all things? Amen. Amen. Remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, uh, verse 7, can, okay, ver, verse 8, I'm sorry. Remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of chains. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I what? I what? I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying. For if we what? Oh, hallelujah. Isn't that a part of the formula? For if we died with him, we shall also live with him. This is daily. If we deny ourselves today, we die to self, we will live with him today. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. So many people use this scripture. Well, if I'm faithless, he's faithful. In other words, if I fall away, he's faithful. He's faithful. Yeah, he's faithful to wait for you to come back. He waits for you to come back and get in divine order again and start the formula of maintaining. He said, remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit, to the ruin of the hearers, but be diligent to present yourselves approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness. And their message was spread like cancer. Hymenaeus and Philodius are of this sort. Who have what? They have what? They strayed concerning the what? Truth. Why did they stray concerning the truth? Because they did not maintain. And what did they not maintain? To deny self, pick up the cross, and follow. Saying that the resurrection is already past. Well, they were deceived, weren't they? And they overthrew the faith of some. Now, is that wild? Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands having this seal. The Lord knows those who are his. Don't you want to be known as his? 
And let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. You know why people fall out of position? You know why they don't complete vows they've made? Because they don't maintain. And they begin to live for themselves. They're willing to die for self instead of die to self. And they think that God is with them. Oh, that's okay. I'll just go and do whatever. Oh, the Lord will rescue me. He's faithful. Again, when an individual does these things, there is no guarantee that he'll restore everything. None. He did not restore King David's desire. And his desire was to what? Build a house of God. That was his desire. And he and God said, no, because you broke covenant with me. Because you shed innocent blood. And not only that, didn't the Lord take the child that he impregnated the girl? And he said, now your sword will never rest. He had battles for the rest of his days. Again, if he would have maintained. And it all started because when kings went out to fight, he decided to stay and have a cup of tea and become peeping David. So he went on a porch and decided to look next door. He seen Bathsheba over there taking a shower. Instead of turning away and running, he pulled out binoculars. <laughs> but after all of this, there's something that he said, I'll never put anything wicked before my eyes. <laughs> because he lost his son. A curse came on his family line. All of his sons fell in the same thing he did. And he could not build the house of God, which was his desire, and there was no rest while he was king. There was constant war until Solomon took over. Then there became peace, but even Solomon fell into fornication on all the rest of his sons until Jesus came to break the curse off the family line. The formula for a just reward is to deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow him daily without maintaining this formula of self-protocol. I'm going to call this self-protocol. That's not today's teaching. Today's teaching is just reward. But without maintaining the formula of self-protocol, you will drift away. You will stray from the truth. You will not rightly divide the word. You will not endure. You will lose faith. You will lose his pr promises and understanding. And you will also lose his presence. And of course, I'll repeat that. <laughs> Without maintaining the formula of self-protocol, you will drift away, stray from the truth, Not rightly divide the word. You'll begin to use the word for your benefit and ignore what God's trying to convict you with. You will not endure trials. Has everybody got it? Get the tape. You'll be begin to lose faith. You'll drift from faith. And faith is associated with vision. You will lose sight. You won't be able to see the things you used to. You will lose his promises, understanding, and his presence. This is why many go into the grave, because they're not willing to maintain. Second John 7. Oh, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. 
Praise the Lord. Second John 7 to 11. And verse 7, is everybody there? Let's speak it. For many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves that we do not lose those things we worked for, but that we may receive a full what? Full reward. You don't want to receive a partial. You want a full reward. And he explains, he says, whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of, G of Christ does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this doctrine, do not receive him into your house nor greet him. For he who greets him shares in his evil deeds. Whoa, why? Because you greet him and approve of what he's doing. There are many antichrist deceivers. These are people that are proclaiming to be believers. They disagree with the doctrine of Christ. They disagree with the Bible. They will attempt to justify their gray area by proclaiming God's love, but not his wrath. Oh, God is love. Oh. And that's all they do is proclaim God's love. But they don't proclaim his wrath because they ignore conviction. Unknowing the demons in them are attempting to sway you or to cause you to drift from the pure truth and cause a lack of full reward. There's something that happens when you begin to associate with so-called believers that don't read the Bible. Because they try to attempt and impart in you and it's not them. They try to convince you that you can do whatever and God loves you. There's no way he would send you to hell. Well, he doesn't. We send ourselves to hell. What happens in this, it causes confusion and lack of understanding. And that's what will begin. There'll be confusion and lack of understanding. And what, remember, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I can guarantee you that after tonight, he will do everything he can to steal from you what was imparted because he fears you. So if he fears you, he wants to confuse you, remove understanding, and remove the seed of truth so that you don't maintain. And he's looking to wait for you not to maintain. In Proverbs 21, this is why we need understanding, isn't it? Proverbs 21. You know, total freedom is an alternative addiction program. It says alternative because it's not an addiction program. It's a discipleship program. We don't believe in addiction programs. Because addiction is a demon. So if individuals will get discipled, they learn how to put things into practice, they remove the spirits from them. And they're no longer addicted. So you don't want to do demon management, you want to be free from them. See, addiction programs teach people how to manage demons. That's why we're not an addiction program. But the label is out there to deceive people. No. <laughs> So they think they're coming to an addiction program. Surprise. You're coming to get free. We're not going to teach you how to manage your demons. We're going to teach you how to get rid of them. So you don't have to manage them. Then you don't have to go around and tell everybody, hi, my name's such and such, and I'm an addict. Or you're not going to go around and tell people, you're, 
You're free, but you got a cigarette in your hand and a bottle of booze in the other. Yeah, I'm free. I've been freed. No, you haven't been freed. You're still in management. Yeah, I completed this course. I completed that course. But even when somebody completes a discipleship course and gets free, the enemy will still try to prevent you from maintaining freedom. That's his job. And Proverbs 21. So welcome to the house of God, the house of death, which produces new life. See, people that go to addiction programs want to maintain their own life and try and stay of not using drugs. So that's really not a new life. It's miserable. What a terrible thing to die. There's people dying miserable. They might not have used drugs or alcohol anymore, but they're full of demons and sin. So they die. People think, oh, they're not an addict. No, they've just been fornicating, lying, stealing, and cheating. I get people coming up to me, yes, I've been clean. I've been clean and sober a gazillion years. And their fruit stink. They stink. They cuss. They smoke. They're watching pornography. That's all addiction. I got to stay busy or I'll start using. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> so don't sleep at night. They eat popcorn all night. They do this, they do that, they, whatever. They're managing the demons, but actually they're really managing them. So they're just cross addiction. Because they don't know how to maintain or they refuse to. In Proverbs 21, 16, what does it say? A man who wanders from the way of understanding will rest in the assembly of the dead. What do you need to understand? The formula. What's the formula? Daily. Take off the old, put on the new, and submit and die. And you'll follow daily. Well, I get away sometimes. You know, there's certain days I skip prayer and I skip putting on the full armor of God. Oh, that's the way. Now I know why the fruits stink. You might not see it, but everybody else does. Just because you took a shower, used deodorant, and washed your hair doesn't mean you're clean. Proverbs 28. So we just said, the word said, anyone who sways from what? Understanding ends up with where? The assembly of the who? Dead. Dead. You know what that is? That ain't heaven. I can tell you that. Now, so that blows the theology of once saved, always saved, doesn't it? Yeah, go ahead and do whatever you want. You're under grace. They don't even know what grace is. They think it's some kind of magical thing. Oh, you're under God's grace. Go ahead. He forgives you. You don't even need to repent. What an idiot. How much blood is on their hands. Verse 18. Are you ready? Can you handle this? Let's speak it then. Whoever walks blamelessly will be what? Saved. Uh-oh, wait a minute. You mean uh, you can't fornicate no more? No. <laughs> you mean I can't lie no more? No. I'm use drugs. No. But again, we can't do those things in our own strength, can we? Only if we participate in the maintenance program. And the maintenance program is the formula of God. That says what? Daily. Deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. 
Whoever walks blamelessly will be saved, but he who is perverse in his ways will suddenly fall. Man, I don't know how I got here. You didn't maintain. Well, what do you mean? I went to church. I went to a Bible study. I even read the, uh, what's that thing, that daily thing? Daily word? Daily bread. I read the daily bread today. Why aren't you blessed? People carry the daily bread around and think it's a Bible. <laughs> it ain't the Bible. It's got scriptures in it, but it's not the Bible. Turn to Matthew 24. Matthew 24. Oh, hallelujah. It's a new season. Matthew 24. Is everybody there? In verse 32. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. The fig tree means Israel. It's prophetic. Jesus is speaking. When its branches have already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. You also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. But of the day and the hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two of them will be in a field, one will be taken, and another one left. <coughs> two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken, and one will be left. Watch, therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. This is powerful. You know, I, I, I went to uh, New York and spoke in Canada, and because of the total freedom that's there, and they're establishing the total freedom in Niagara Falls, and they're closing on a residential house in August. And uh, so while I was there, I went to a wedding. And uh, I, I didn't really want to go, but I knew I needed to go because it was the last time I would see them. And I don't know why, but it was in my spirit that this would be the last time I see them unless there was a change of somehow. So... I went to the wedding, and they're supposed to be believers. And uh, I've been praying for these people for a long time. And I, during the course of my walk with the Lord, I was hearing testimonies of people getting saved. A lot of my cousins were being saved and so forth. And when I went to the wedding, um, I saw an open bar. I thought, whoa, Okay. And uh, then they went and they did the wedding. And when they did the wedding, this I don't know who he was. He might have been a preacher. I didn't go any further. And the only thing I know is reading out of this book and flipping pages. Of course, I was waiting for them to send, someone to say, "Is anybody contest this wedding? I would have stood up. I said, yeah, I contest the dude preaching. <laughs> Get out of there. These people need salvation, man. And he was all this fluffy stuff. And so they did the thing, and they, you know, you're married. Of course, it's, it's his fifth marriage, so, you know, everybody was pretty used to something. And uh, so during the, uh, I guess, their, their celebration, 
it was, I mean, I saw a lot of people that came up and hugged me, and then they, I didn't barely see them after that. <laughs> it's like, man, what do I got, a plague? Yes. I carry the presence of God. And the demons in them. See, the demons knew why I was there. And I said, Lord, I don't even like it here. I don't like what I'm sensing, what I'm feeling. But I know you sent me, so I'm going to bust through. So I just began to do some warfare, and I busted through. And I got to speak to a few people. And one of the people, I was, was, one of the persons said to me, man, if we'd have known you were coming, you know, maybe you could have done the wedding. <laughs> Hallelujah, that would have been sweet. I wouldn't mind have done that. And, uh, and we started talking, and, 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 you know, and I shared about, you know, things are getting ready to happen. Well, I'm a good person. I said, well, good people go to hell. The person almost fell out. <laughs> what do you mean good people go to hell? That's right. The only way home is through Jesus Christ. That's it. Well, I'm a good person. Oh, good people go to hell. So... That end of that conversation. <laughs> and I was sitting next to somebody, another relative with their husband, and they were saying, oh, man, you look good, this, that, whatever. I said, praise be to God, it's his presence. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you've come a long way, this, that, one. Listen, man, you know why I'm here, I said? I'm here to tell everybody to get ready. That's why I'm here. And I'm telling you, you need to get ready. Oh, I don't want to hear that stuff. I don't want, you kidding? I'm, I don't want to hear, that frightens me. I got grandkids. Well, don't you think you need to know to tell your grandkids? No, no, no. I don't, don't tell me nothing. I'd rather be ignorant. Like ignorant is an excuse to get rescued. No, it's not. And I was grieved. So I hung out as long as I could with all the booze and all the disco ducking. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't have the ball turning, you know. I was waiting for John Travolta to show up. <laughs> and uh, I, I fought as long as I could. <laughs> I was like, okay, I spoke to as many people and I said, man, I got to get out of here. So I said goodbye to a few of them, and, and I left. And when I left, I shook the dust off, killed every corruptible seed, did my prayers. And the scripture that came to me was in the days of Noah. In the days of Noah. I thought, my God, Lord, is this what it's like everywhere? See, because I don't get out too much. Is this what it's like? He said, that's why I've allowed you to know my grieving. I've allowed you to know my pain. And I'm giving you some strong messages now that my children, the ones that are close to me, will rise up and become bold and not die for their life, but die to their life so that I can use them in the full capacity and they can receive a full just reward. This is what it's about. You know, there, we, we get in an area where we lose sight. One of the things that the Lord really impressed with me, he said, I sent you into the world. Just like I sent Jesus into the world, I send my children. Everybody comes through a womb. I sent you not on a mission of religion, but I sent you on a military mission. And I want you to understand that your mission is clear and your purpose is clear. This is a military operation, not a religious one. I've sent my military on the earth. I have a specific protocol. People say that they submit to me, he says, but they won't submit to my government on the earth, that it's prideful, and I will reject my plan to them, my strategies. 
until they begin to submit to my government that is on the earth. They think they're pure. They think they're just plain men or women, but they are my government on the earth. And because they're blinded and deceived and they choose not to maintain, they look at individuals as a man and not as sons and daughters of God Almighty, not as officers of my kingdom. I have sent a military action, a military purpose, a military protocol, and a military calling. This is not a religious operation. You've been sent in this world on a mission from God, on a military mission. And until we get understanding on that, we will be swayed, tossed to and fro, and get caught up in the soulish arena. It is the ministry of the spirit. The ministry of the spirit is a military action. The ministry of the soul is human precepts. In Matthew 25, In verse 31. Let's speak it. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them one from another. As a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats, sheep are obedient, goats are rebellious. Sheep are obedient, goats are rebellious. That's why the war, which means God's wrath against rebellion, is happening. Verse 33. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. These were the obedient ones. These were the ones who maintained. They are called sheep. That's why he says, my sheep know my voice. Goats do not know the voice of God. Amen. Sheep do. Goats must be told what to do until they become submissive and learn how to maintain and maintain and maintain, then they begin to hear the voice of God and they become sheep. He said, for I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked, you clothed me. I was sick, you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, feed you or Thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you stranger and take you in or naked or clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to him, Surely I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. See, but these were individuals that were maintaining, weren't they? Amen? They maintained. And they weren't looking at the area of self-promotion because of what they were doing. They weren't looking at the area of earning their way into heaven because they were right with God. That's all that mattered. So they didn't focus on what they were doing. They just did it. See, but the, the goat, the unrighteous, then he will also say to those on the left, which were the goats, Depart from me, you curse into everlasting fire. Prepare for the devil and his angels. So the goats are going there. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not take me in naked. You did not clothe me sick in prison. You didn't visit me. Then I also answered, saying, Lord, when we see you hungry or thirsty or naked or did not minister to you. And then he answered them saying, Surely I say to you, and as much as you did, it, did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And all these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. They did not maintain and they lost understanding. 
in Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews 2. And I don't think I'll be able to finish this or we'd be here for a while. <laughs> but we will. <laughs> Hebrews 2. He sparks too. <laughs> In verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Hebrews 2, verse 1. Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we what? Drift away. We must maintain. Without maintaining, we don't receive a just reward or a full reward. For if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received, they what? Just reward. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him? God also, bearing witness both with signs and wonders, with the various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to his own will. For he has not put the world to come, of which we speak in subjection to angels." But one testified in a certain place, saying, What is man that you are mindful of him? Or the son of man that you take care of him? You have made him a little lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor. And set him over the works of your hands. You have put all things in subjection under his feet. Who's he talking about? Me and you. He's talking about us. The angels are like, what are you doing with these people? Look at them. They're wicked. It's amazing. I mean, they, they watch. They watch how people change. They watch the hand of God change a person. And they're like, whoa. They look into these things. They don't know what it's like to be human. They don't know what it's like to go. They, oh, they only can see. And they say what we go through. They see how frail we, frail we are. And they look into them. Man, why, how can you love these people so much? Why don't you just kill them all? <laughs> Let's start over. <laughs> he did with the generation of Noah, didn't he? He said, man, you keep this about Kia. And he did. Of course, they were all, all offsprings. Of fallen angels. That's why he killed them all. But he loves us unconditionally. Amen? For in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not to be put under him, but now we do not, <clears throat> but now we do not yet see all things put under him. But we see Jesus. Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, by God's plan, might taste death for everyone. See, but it was made for me and you. Everything was made for me and you to have dominion and authority and everything subject under us. That's what the board tells us, that the earth groans. The earth groans and is waiting for me and you to cha be changed into the sons of God to take dominion and control again. In verse 10 it says, For it was fitting for him for whom all things and by whom all things in bringing many sons to glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Perfect through what? Suffering. Suffering. So quick your complaining and grumbling. Just maintain. You're being perfected. Get your eyes off yourself. You're being perfected. 
For both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are all of one for which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will sing praise. You know, Jesus shows up and sings with us. So you who don't sing, he's watching. He writes it down. Uh-huh. Gets book, put in a book of remembrance. Uh, didn't sing that day. To, didn't honor me, glory. Oh, you flesh creature. Flesh creature. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, here am I and the children whom God has given me. Listen, God Almighty, the creator, gave all things to Jesus. He's the one that created us. He's for us, not against us. But the enemy loves to twist things around. He's a twister from get-go. And in this, we have to have understanding. Satan's greatest weapon is deception and his power is fear. We've got, to be, we've got to stop being tossed to and fro. We've got to be steadfast in the area of maintaining. In the area of what? Maintaining. maintaining. Take heed and put to practice or you will drift away. You will drift away from conviction. You will drift away from righteousness. Remember, to practice is to maintain, isn't it? Many stop for maintaining, and they lose healing. They lose freedom. They lose their deliverance. They lose their relationship with the Lord. They lose their good works, fruits, salvation, and their reward. They stop abiding in God's presence through worship, word through prayer, and fellowship, where the word says, forsake not to assemble. They drift into self. Amen. They begin to die for self instead of dying to self. We are in a season of acceleration. There is no time for games. We are in a season of acceleration. God is moving quickly to train up and get people on the front line to receive. It is essential. You know, we're to come and get refreshed, learn, put things into practice, maintain practice, so that when you're out and about in the world, you can lay hands on the sick. You can cast out a devil. You don't need to do it in the house of God. You need to do it outside the house of God. The only reason why people, so many people want to do it in the house of God is because they want to be seen. We need to do it outside. Amen? We don't need to be seen. We're to be cloaked in humility so we're not seen. But we must know God's voice, but only the sheep do, not the goat. The goat's always in confusion. The goat will die for self, but not to self. So you've got to examine yourself. Are you a goat or a sheep? Are you truly maintaining? You know... It's amazing in how many people do not get dressed with the full armor of God every day. I did yesterday. <laughs> Daily Amen. deny yourself. Daily. The word tells us we don't fight flesh and blood. We're to get dressed with the full armor. The full, listen, would a police officer go without bulletproof vest? No. Then why would we go out without being dressed with the full armor of God? 
God cannot trust a person who's not dressed with the full armor. He won't use that person. That person will use God. Why? Because that's a requirement of maintaining. I don't need to get dressed with the full armor of God. God knows. Yes, he knows you're not dressed. <laughs> he knows you're naked. He knows you're not ready for battle. He knows you're deceived. He knows you're not maintaining. And you're losing his trust. Again, you have been sent into this realm on a military operation, not a religious one. You haven't been sent here to build a, your empires. You've been sent here to build the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven and maintain until he comes. That's why we're here. Because everything is about eternity, not temporary. Amen? We will continue. But in the meantime, Lord, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that the seed that has been imparted will grow and bear fruit for your glory. Convict, change, break, and loose us from the precepts of humanity so the statutes of Christ will be manifested with discipline, consistency, and maintaining and practicing on a daily basis according to your formula of denying ourselves, picking up the cross, and following you in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Praise God.